This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we take a look at some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. We also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 14th of January, 2022. I am AX. I am DK. And I am GK. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. The Daily Nation, Azimio Uhuru Raila Rally MP. A lot of <laughs> A lot of R's. A lot of R's. The Standard. R <laughs> Mudavadi Kalonzo snub Uhuru's invite. Mm -hmm. The star Moi family embroiled in 300 shil billion shilling battle. Mm -hmm. And finally, the People Daily, IEBC to perform final poll rights. Ooh. Okay, uh, so who are we giving the winning headline to? I think everything else spoke to nonsensical yes. context. Mm -hmm. Then you give it to Daily Nation, that's my opinion. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there we have it, the Daily Nation is our winning headline. So now, uh, DK, mm. why don't you kick us off? Sure. The 2022 presidential election is a war. In our view, William Ruto has won the 2022 argument, but Raila will win the 2022 war. At Fort Hall School of Government, we told William Ruto that he will not become president. He will be made president. And if he will not become president this time, his downfall can only be explained by a story. It is about a bishop, a priest, and the keys to the offertory. Once upon a time, a bishop invited a young priest called Father Odongo from Nyando to his house for dinner. During the meal, Father Odongo noticed some signs of intimacy between the Catholic bishop and his housemaid. As Father Odongo was leaving, the bishop said to him, I know what you are thinking, but really our relationship is strictly proper. A few days later, the housemaid informed the bishop that a valuable golden key to the offertory was missing since Father Odongo's visit. And so she wondered if Father Odongo might have taken it. The bishop then wrote to Father Odongo saying, Dear Father Odongo, I am not saying that you took the golden key to the offertory from my house. And I'm not saying that you did not take that golden key from my house. But the fact is that the key has been missing since your visit. <laughs> Father Odongo then replied, Dear Bishop, I am not saying that you do sleep with your housemaid, and I'm not saying that you do not sleep with your housemaid. But the fact is, if you are sleeping in your own bed, you would by now have found the golden key that you are looking for. What Father Odongo had done was to take the golden key and place it on the bishop's bed. This way he wanted to establish whether the bishop slept on his bed or that of his mboch. And he confirmed his worst fears. Dear William Ruto, for the last four years, the key to the presidency was in your Kalenjin bedroom. But all along, you are busy romancing your Gemmboch. You abandoned your Kalenjin bedroom and absconded your duties as deputy president of Kenya. And that is why Bumet was hostile to you, William Ruto, this week. You left your Bumet bedroom where the golden keys were 
tucheza kikuyu brown mboch <laughs> what you do not know is that your downfall will be engineered by this brown gamma house girl in the meantime your kalenjin bedroom will be infested by other rutos and buzekis and by the time you go back to that bedroom <laughs> your children will be speaking another language including chinese Professor Mutahi Gunyi often says that the battle is hardest when victory is nearest. And it is our view that Baba will be the fifth. Fact. However, now is not the time to relax. As victory gets nearer, Baba must work five times harder than the five times that he has run for the presidency. And he must look humble while doing it. This guy Ruto looks like he is working for it. He looks like a hungry candidate. If Baba is to win, he must appeal to the people to support him. He cannot look like he has already won. Baba too must look like a candidate. This reminded me of the story of a young boy and a wise man who knew better. Once upon a time, a Nigerian wise man would move from village to village and answer the most difficult questions without fail. But one day, a clever Yoruba boy hatched a scheme. He decided to hold a delicate butterfly in his hand and then approach the wise man with just one question. Dead or alive? If the wise man said the butterfly was dead, the boy would release it. If the wise man said it was alive, the boy would squeeze the butterfly to its death. Either way, the boy would win. When the wise oracle visited his village, the boy popped from the crowds with a clenched fist. Then he shouted to the wise man, dead or alive? The wise man studied the eyes of the little boy and without hesitation, he told him, it all depends on you. And these are the words that country is telling Baba. It all depends on you. Like the life of the butterfly, your life as president depends on you and not on any other players. And so you must play your cards right. It depends on you and not the deep state. And this is primarily because during an election year, agents of the deep state gain multiple personalities disorder. And this makes them unreliable and untrustworthy. Therefore, you must hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. It depends on you and not on the president. And so you should take the president's support as an advantage, but not as your only advantage. And that is why country is telling you that it all depends on you. I will conclude with the words of a wise man who once said that the only person who you are destined to become is the person that you decide and now a story for the Bearded Sisters, specifically Kalonzo Musyoka and Musalia Mudavadi. Once upon a time, there were two fathers. One was called Chi and the other Meng. The first father had two sons. One loved knowledge and learning and the other loved war. The first son read and became very learned and was appointed a tutor in the king's palace. The second son studied war strategy and was made a general in the king's army. The second father, Mr. Meng, was very, very poor. When he heard about the success of Chi's children, he sent his own two sons to school to follow their example. Mr. Meng's first son also read and became very learned. However, his cleverness seemed to threaten the king. So the king had the son castrated and sent into exile. Meanwhile, his second son also studied war strategy. However, he became such a military genius that the king felt threatened. So the king cut both of his feet off so that he would not rise up and overthrow him. So in the end, both fathers, Chi and Meng, did the exact same thing. But one was successful and the other failed miserably. 
In the case of the Bearded Sisters, we don't know who is the son of Chi and who is the son of Meng. What we do know is that one will be exiled, castrated, and have their legs broken, and the other will serve in the king's court. In the meantime, both will have done the same thing, but with different results. But what is clear to the nation is that the one who supports Raila first will become the sixth president of Kenya in 2027. As for the other, he will be castrated, exiled, and have his legs broken. Dear Colonzo and Mudabadi, which option between the two are you aligned to? You know, AX, mm. completely correct. Yes. First mover advantage is the most important for both of these guys. Yeah. If they don't move quick, True. they end up uh, being as descriptive as, yeah. as you stated. <laughs> so, on a day when we had a Daily Nation winning our winning headline, mm -hmm. uh, we would like to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube fan channel. Mm -hmm. We are also on your TV screens. Find mm -hmm. us on Pang Free to Air, mm -hmm. Go TV, and Star Times. Mm -hmm. But as we conclude, I'll leave you with this quote mm -hmm. by our favorite, one of our favorite people, mm -hmm. that is, of course, Sun Tzu, who mm -hmm. said, the greatest victory is that which requires no battle. Ooh. Have a prosperous new year.